Hello, everybody. My name is Tiffany. I'm the Tipsy Artist. Cheers. And today we are going live to teach you how to paint this super cute, grateful heart. And I've got a lot of mine worked out already, but we always have a painting kit that go uh, that goes with all of our designs here. And this is the line art that we have transfer paper with. So this gives you a good idea of how it works. I've got this here on top just to show you. Um, I always place the shiny side down and then the dull side is up. And then this line art comes with the kit. And we have a lot of word choices. So today I've used grateful as the mix to go uh, with this design, but you could do love, blessed, peace, hope. There's just, you know, all kinds of fun options there. So let me go ahead and lift this off and place this off to the side here. And then I went ahead and worked in all of my work uh, to begin with, but basically it will look like a pencil line to start with basically just like that. And then I have a permanent marker that is in the kit. And then I go ahead and work it all out with the, the really dark line so that this will bleed through the paint and it makes it very easy for beginners. So our model around here is easy and fun, always that way for beginners. That's our main goal. We're trying to create an experience that's very relaxing and gives you a sense of accomplishment. So this is how it will look when you start. And then one other thing that I do, you can use a ruler, but I do so much shiplap with all my paintings that I've actually taken a piece of uh, poster board and I've cut it for the section that I want. And then I go ahead and lay this out. To me, this is a little bit easier than having to measure every single time since I do this so much. And then I just go ahead and lay it out and do it just a really you know, nice hard line on top. And then I went ahead and avoided, this is going to be a little bit of a bigger section in here. And, you know, shiplap is just basically old wood. That's that look that had the slats basically that go across the back. So it doesn't have to be the exact same size. And I, did, I didn't want to interrupt the lines. So I think that can sometimes cause a problem. So I did go ahead and move this up a little bit, made my line just above where the word is. And then we're all set and we're all ready to go. Okay, so um, also know that in the description, I always have a link uh, to the painting kit and of course all the supplies that you need as well. So um, you can always look for that. If you have any questions, always uh, let me know in the comments. I always get back with everybody. And hello to everybody out there that's joining me today. Welcome, hope y'all are staying warm and having a good time today. This is a good, fireplace day, I think. So my sweet little doggie's right next to me, right in front of the fire. So she's staying very warm. And then my honey bear's here today too. What's up? <laughs> but he is working. He is, uh, we're doing a little bit of renovation on the tipsy artist side. So he's doing some new painting, getting it all pretty, all fixed up. All right. So um, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and put on my little peepers so I can see a lot better close up. And we're going to start with uh, the background color here. So in your kit, you do have these three brushes to start with here. So you can always use your mama brush for the bigger area. And then we've got little buddy and then little bit. Uh, going live, I like to work a little bit faster than usual. So I'm going to go ahead and use a pretty big brush to go ahead and get started with. And then your paint kit. So mine's a little bit of a hot mess, but basically it kind of looks like this, <laughs> kind of. Mine's a little bit loved, but we're going to start with, let's see, let me grab it here, some titanium white, and then also some Mars black. All right, so that's going to be our start here, and I've already got some out on a plate just nearby. And I've got my water bucket nearby. I'm going to add just a little bit of some water to my plate here, and then just moisten my brush just a little bit. Let's grab a little bit of some white, push that off to the side, and then just a tiny little touch of black. So just barely touch into that black. Let's push that in. We're going to make this a really pretty light gray color. Keeps it really nice and neutral. All right, and then let's grab a little bit more water. So again, lots of white, titanium white, and then a little tiny touch of that black just to make a really light, light gray. And then what I'll do is I'm going to just sweep this across the back here, all the way across, nice horizontal strokes. 
And there's going to be a little bit of a bleed through on the letters. But as promised, it will just bleed right through. Now, another helpful hint here, too, is when doing this at home, you can always do your entire background first, and then you can let that set up and dry. Then you can take your line art and then just do that right over the top. That way you're not having to do your lettering twice. I just have to do so much in such a short period of time when I go live that I go ahead and work this way. You can certainly make this part a little bit easier on yourself. That way there's no cut in work. And then this really light color can just go all the way through the background. And because this is so light, that actually works with this design. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of cut in work around the edges here. And then I'll just extend that color just right out to the side. So when I hold this brush, this is just a really nice, big, flat Taclon brush. And when I hold it in this position, then it gives you a nice, thin line edge so that you can actually do your cut and work with ease. So you just take that all the way around. I need to mix up a little bit more of this. So a little tiny touch of the black with the white gives me a really light, light gray. And I'll go ahead and just extend this out to the side. And lots of white, tiny little touch of that black. Just pull that all the way out to the side there. Go ahead and move this up just a little bit. Get another mix, lots of white, tiny little touch of that black, mix up a really light, light gray. Kind of re wet the paint here on the sides. And then you can be a little bit more dramatic with some of those darker shades of gray. I'm going to grab a little bit more. And then this is very wet with paint. So we're going to go ahead and just lightly drag that in and pull that across. A little bit more here on the other side. This is giving that nice weathered look to it. Just pull that all the way across there. A little bit more. All right, so that fixes us up for all the background. Really nice look that's happening there. So I'm going to go ahead and take this big brush, just put it into that bath water there. And then we're going to go ahead and start working into the center design. So I've got some fun stuff happening here. I've got my zebra print, some circles. Um, we've got um, the buffalo check, roses, and some cheetah prints. So we have pretty much covered every um, wonderful pattern. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the roses first. And I'll be using a little buddy brush. This is just a quarter inch flat. And then let's go ahead and grab some primary magenta. then a little bit of some cadmium red. Let's 
grab some white too. Let's mix those two together. This really just gives us a nice, cool red color. You can definitely use this as an accent here in a moment. And I'm going to grab a lot of this white, and mix these two together. So this design is a wonderful gift for Valentine's Day. But the other thing I like about it is because it's just a classic heart, you can keep it up all year round. All right, so we've got lots of white mixed in now. I'm going to go ahead and work into the background of my roses. So initially, your roses will look a lot like just big lumpy circles. They do become a little bit shapeless in the very beginning. So I'll just push this in over the top here. This is a, a light pink that we mixed up. And we've got one more right in through here. All right, so that gives us a really good foundation. And then I'm gonna come in with just a clean little body brush, a little bit of water. And then we're gonna go ahead and just Leave that edge real quick. All right, awesome. Okay, so now for some detail work over the tops of the roses. So I'm going to grab, uh, this is my little bit brush. It is just a round tack on brush. And let's do a little bit of white with this too. And then we're gonna make what looks like just big soft curves. So it kind of makes you feel like you're doing a little bit of a parentheses. These are the reference to the petals, basically. And normally I'd have you take this in like circles all the way around, but because of the design, it cuts the rows in half. So we're just doing a half of this, half of the rows. So it basically just looks like a little half circle or a parentheses. And I do wiggle the brush a little bit as I do this little push and wiggle. And then that represents that first layer of those abstracted petals that come down. All right, now I wanna go into the darkest shade here. So I'm gonna give just a quick wipe on a paper towel. And then I'll grab some of this darker, cool red that we mixed up. And then right in the center, I just wanna do what looks like a little comma. And then I just lift off with a light hand And then we're going to do just a nice soft echo of that first design, just little half circles. And we'll get a nice soft blend into the white as well. We're just accentuating a little bit of shadow and different color happening with those roses. And if you go a little bit too extreme in one direction or another with the darks and the lights, you can always rework back in. There's a lot of flexibility and forgiveness with this. So for example, I might want to come back in with a little bit more white right over the top. Be a nice soft blend between the two. All right, so we have our beautiful roses done now. It's very simple. All right, so I gave my little bit brush a bath, and I'm gonna go ahead and dry that off. Now let's go ahead and mix up some really pretty greens. So in our kit here, we have some Viridian, and then also some bright yellow green, and also some cadmium green. Now, I had some of this going from yesterday, and I'm going to see if it's still, it may be dry. I'm not sure. It's pretty dry. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> okay. Well, but I'll give it a shot. Sometimes I let my paint dry up, and I don't cover it very well. 
I'm always painting so much. All right, we're doing little pea size amounts. I'm going to give you a visual on this here in just a second. But all three of those colors, the viridian, the bright yellow green, and the cadmium green, right through here. And again, just little pea size amounts of all those. And I've got my little bit brush all ready to go, cleaned up. Let's add a little bit of white too. I'm going to show you what this Viridian looks like with a little bit of white. It has a really pretty, almost like a, a fun teal color to it. And then you can add just little touches of the brights and then the cadmium. Let's do a little spin here now that we have it loaded up in the belly of the brush. And then we'll work on doing just our little leaves here. So our leaves um, basically just kind of look like, like a little V shape or the pattern looks like you make a little parentheses and a little parentheses and then you can just fill that in. You can also get a nice layer of paint on one flat side of the brush and just do a little bit of a push and then drag it out. And that allows for a lot of texture to just rest right on the surface. You can see I'm just leaving a lot of paint just right on top. So it keeps that very nice and textural. All right, very nice. Um, so I'm gonna continue on with this same color. I'm gonna go with a little bit more of a turquoise look though. So I'm going to keep this happening, but then also let's add a little bit of some primary cyan blue because we're going to work this in for the really pretty circle color that happens over in this section here. And let's grab some more white. Let's mix this up here on the side. All right, that's really pretty. So that's a really nice turquoise look. Let's grab a little bit more white. All right, very nice. Also still using the little bit brush. Again, this is just a small round tacklon brush. And then I'm gonna go ahead and come around in a nice big circle. And just work right into that circle shape. If you go over that line just a little bit, don't worry about that. We can just clean that up at the very end. And also always know that your little kit comes with a permanent marker. So you can always tidy that up with your permanent marker too, which I strongly recommend. It's just so much easier for beginners to use that, especially if you struggle a little bit with a shaky hand. All right, so initially when you're working in the lines of a curve, uh, you'll want to hold the brush just like a pencil so you can get around those edges. And then you'll want to feather that brush stroke out a little bit and get a nice layer of paint that just rests right on top. So I'm going to hold my brush a little bit more just right out to the side parallel to the canvas. That'll be my finishing stroke there when I'm working in that second layer of color there. So initially, we're just trying to get into the lines. And then we're going to start to feather that out. Nice thick coat of paint right over the top. And then here's our last one. All right, very nice. All right, so it's looking really good. We're starting to get a lot of color and play here. And then now let's go ahead and start to work on that really beautiful cheetah print happening. So I'm giving my little bit brush a nice bath. And then we need to work on a really nice light golden color. So this can be a big mix of lots of, don't worry, I'll map it all out for you and give you instructions, but we're going to use a little bit of some primary yellow. Some of you may just have gold, uh, like a golden ochre color, and if you do, then this is very simple. 
Uh, but if you're having to really mix it all up from scratch, then it can be several steps. All right, so I've got my primary yellow to begin with here off to the side. Now we need to mix up a little bit of some brown. So I'll be using some cadmium orange. All right, now mixing up brown is simple. That is just black and orange. So let's get that going over here to the side. So very simple there. So now we have our brown and then we have our really pretty bright primary yellow here. So we're going for that kind of golden ochre look. So now I'm gonna push in a little bit of white and brown and that primary yellow. Let's grab a little bit more white. This will be the base uh, for our cheetah print. So again, we mixed in some brown, some primary yellow, and some white. And I'm basically just mixing until I get to that stage where I really love it. So usually always a lot more white than you think. All right, so that's pretty light, but that's definitely what I want. My first uh, layer here is definitely very light. So I'm still using my little bit brush and we're just gonna push this in over the top here. And that cheetah print will definitely bleed through so you won't lose your work on that. But also repainting those is actually extremely easy. So I'll teach you how to do that too. So if you do happen to get really full coverage over the top, again, very easy to repaint that without any guidance from the traceable. All right, so that is looking lovely. We're gonna give that a little bit of some setup and dry time. And then let's go ahead and work on a little bit of our Buffalo check here. So let's see, let's grab little buddy. There we go. Right. Here's a little buddy brush. Again, just a quarter inch tack on flat brush. And then I like to do a lot of the legwork with this with the permanent marker. And of course we have all the line work done for you, but I like to come back in and fill in everything that's black that I can. And then also I just use a regular graphite pencil to map out the gray. So basically, you know, your blacks will alternate and then your gray goes in quadrants of top side to side and then bottom all around your black. And then, if you just take that step by step all the way through, then your white will just fall out and it just falls into place. You just take it baby steps. It all works out. And hello, Brandy. I see your uh, wonderful comments. It says happy or good afternoon, beautiful soul. Hope you have a fantastic day. Well, thank you so much. And right back at you. <laughs> That's such an awesome thing to say. All right. So here we go. We've got some white and then a little bit of black. We're going to make a like a dark charcoal color. All right, so there it is. And I'm going to add just a tiny amount of water to this to help it kind of bleed through. And then this will basically help it just flow right into every crevice on the canvas. So it keeps you from struggling with a little bit of that dry brush thing. So we've got just that little bit of gray. And again, I added just a tiny amount of water. I'm going to push that through to where it's not too much. But it's just a real tiny little stroke just right over the top. Okay, it looks like I need a little bit more water. Because that water just really makes it a lot easier. A few quick little strokes here, right on the top here. The other thing that I've noticed with a lot of uh, the Buffalo check and even the Courtly check too, is that it's not, you look up close and it's always got just a teeny amount of flaw to it. It's not super perfect. So I think people just like the look of that handcrafted look. So you don't see, it's not 
absolutely precise. It never is. So that gives you a little bit of relief, huh? <laughs> Just embrace the imperfection. And know that that's actually a little bit of a desired look. That way it does look handcrafted and not like it's just been manufactured anymore. That's becoming more and more rare. So we, we actually like the look of that. And then, of course, you can also, if you need to touch up any little pieces of black, I like to let the white of the canvas be the white. That just makes it so much easier. But if you do want that textural white, you can certainly work that in as well. I'm going to come back in with just a little bit of the black. And then you can tidy up a little bit here and just any place that you may have kind of extended over. You can come back in and just barely touch up your little bits of black. But most of that is done for you, so it's all good. All right, so that's very nice, and voila, we're done. See how easy that is? Makes it very nice and easy. Okay, so now what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and work on a little bit of our cheetah pattern. So our traceable gives us lots of pattern that's bleeding through already, and I'm going to go ahead and take, basically I want something that's contrasting over the top for the center spot. Um, so definitely... A, darker than this so let's grab a little bit more of that brown and mix that into that golden color that we mixed up earlier so again the colors we have going on here we've got the brown we've got that primary yellow and a little bit of white so i'm going to do just one little spot just right in the middle so it's just like a little drag of the brush there just a little push and pull right in the center of all those little spots right there. All right, let's go ahead and rinse out. Dry off our brush. Now we're going to come into just a little bit of our black. And you can add just a tiny touch of water to this too. Let's go ahead and mix that in, make that black a bit more fluid. And then I'm gonna go ahead and spin out the tip of the brush into a nice fine point. And then we're basically just giving a little bit of a wiggle and doing that little, like a parentheses with a little bit of a wiggle. Let's just do another little black spot there. Again, little parentheses, a little bit of a wiggle. Take that on either side. So little parentheses and little wiggle. So now you see how this is so easy, you don't necessarily even need that reference from the traceable, but it does bleed through, so it's there for you. And I do try to just wiggle the brush a little bit. You don't want it to be too perfect. And there it is. There is our cheetah print, so it's all lined up now. And then we can start to tidy up just little bits of black now, too. So I'm going to take that same brush, push it back into the black. Um, also know that you can let it completely set up and dry and do this step with your permanent marker. Highly recommend this for beginners, especially if you have a shaky hand. The trick is just make sure that you always let all the paint completely set up and dry because it will... Um, basically destroy a permanent marker instantly. As soon as wet paint hits the tip of that marker, it'll just, you'll have to throw it in the trash. So just make sure it always hits dry paint and you'll be able to use it for a really long time. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how it's done with some paint. So again, our little bit brush, which is just a round tack on brush. And then I just have a little bit of some touch up work here to do. So I'm gonna firm up some of these lines in here. and then reinforce these little curves around our circles. And you can certainly feel how you might wanna do this step with that permanent marker. It certainly is 
a lot easier for beginners, but if you're a purist and you're trying to learn with paint, well then just go for it. So you can do this too. Now to try to help steady my hand, I like to rest the weight of my hand on my pinky. That does help stabilize it so that I can work that stroke all the way around there. And you do want to watch your pinky too. Just make sure you don't put it in wet paint and then move it someplace else. You might have to end up tidying up a little area. All right. And then this zebra print is pretty much just done for us. You can add little touches of black paint right over the top just to give it a little bit of that painterly texture because we did have the nice cheat of this basically being all done for us with the permanent marker and all that line work with our traceable. But again, you can certainly come back in and just refine any little edges. And just give a little bit of that paint texture happening there. And then I'm going to go ahead and start to work on just this outline edge here too. Now this is such a big long line I like to do the curlies if necessary with a little bit, but because this is so long, now I'm actually going to go in and use my mama brush. She is a half inch tack on flat. So I'm going to go ahead and do some firm pressure here. And you want to check your edge. It is nice and thin. So you really want to make sure that the belly of the brush doesn't get too full with paint or it makes it just kind of spread out. And then it's really hard to get that thin line. But now that we've got a nice thin edge, then we can go in around that whole line edge. I'm going to add a little bit more water. It'll help this become a little bit more fluid and flow into those nicks and crannies of the canvas. You can take this all the way around. This will just give you a nice thick line around it. Usually take several coats and you can have a really nice thick line around here. I wouldn't worry about it being too thin. So if it does get a little bit thick on you, that's actually okay. Get more pressure, a little bit of water there. We're just tidying up where a little bit of that overlay from the background kind of ran into the heart design in the very beginning. So this will definitely help clean this up a little bit and refine that design and make that heart really pop right out to the front. Let's give a little bit more thickness here on this side just to help that match. All right, very nice. Okay, so now we need to do this inside line. Still using the Mama brush, which again is just a half inch flat. Got a little bit more water to just our Mars black paint. Nice firm pressure as we load up the brush, still maintaining that really nice thin edge. That makes this a lot easier. And we'll just take this all the way around that shape. And as we go around that corner, it will add some thickness to the line, but that's okay. And just be really patient with it. And you will have to reload the brush a lot. And it's okay to add a little bit of water to it too. Just to help it, again, make it more fluid and really flow into any of those little white peekaboo spots that you sometimes get. Okay, this is looking wonderful. All right, so we're actually 
done with all of our design work, um, you can certainly go over more of the little curly cues if you want to reinforce some of those. I think the permanent marker does a beautiful job of accentuating all those. Another fun little trick that you can do now is a little dot technique. So I use the smallest brush that I have, and I actually just use the handle. And I go ahead and dip into the black paint. There it is. And I'm going to go ahead and just make lovely little dots. Just sprinkle those all around. And I love this little trick because it always ends up being the same. If for some reason you don't get good compression down the first one, you can always just re-dot it. It's very easy to do. Just go back in and grab a little bit more paint. Again, I'm just going right back into it like that. And then just sprinkling those around. So beginners always really like this technique, again, just because of the simplicity of it. And you can always use bigger brushes that have you know, a bigger circle on the end to create really fun patterns you know, in different areas of the painting as well. So we're definitely just using the smallest brush just to keep this dot really small and delicate. So that's looking good. So you can see how that really added a lot of some really fun pattern. Let's do just a few more there. If you notice anything that maybe looks, you know, a little bit empty, you can certainly come back in and just add a few more of those little polka dots. All right. So it's looking great. All right, now we're going to go ahead and work in our lettering up here at the top. So here's the great news. This is all completely dry here. So you can just use your permanent marker. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a visual on that just to go ahead and work that into that shape. People that have a little bit of a shaky hand they actually really prefer this as a way to finish up. So you can do the whole thing that way. Let me wait, wait for my little, yeah, it's cut. Sometimes we get little delays out here in a beautiful little town of Guthrie, Oklahoma. All right, so I've got my little bit brush. Maybe I might want to use a smaller you can see if I've got a much smaller one in here, too. I don't know what happened to it? This one's a little bit. I may go back to that one here in a second. All right, we're going to stick with this one. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more water. Let's get a little tiny rotation into our black. And again, there's a little bit of water in there, so it makes the paint very fluid. And I'm going to spin that right out to a fine point. And then we're just going to work on getting this into the lettering right over the top here. And the main, uh, I guess, just best advice here for a little bit of a caution is Whenever you have a loop in the letter, always make sure and go around that negative space. Don't go inside of it or you'll basically eliminate that negative space with your letter. And that's very crucial for being able to maintain the shape of the letter. So you want to be real careful with that. Because that's something I definitely see a lot with beginners is that they'll be following along with this. Like it's coming up now, we have the A, so I want to make sure and go around that loop right in the center. Don't go on the inside or you'll just blacken it from the inside and then you lose that shape. Following these all the way around. You can see how when you start to use a brush, it's actually a little bit faster than the permanent marker. It is faster, but 
It just takes some time to practice with it. And then we have another little loop, so I'm going to be really careful to go around the outside. Another one right there. Be real careful. So again, this is just a really patient process. And you can certainly tidy up with your permanent marker whenever you are done. And if you do get a little bit of dry brush happening with your brush stroke, that's actually a desirable look anymore that people will just leave with some intention too. So keep that in mind. Like especially when you're finishing off, like I'm gonna do one right there. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of that transparency and dry brush look at the very end of that. All right, so that is our beautiful lettering. And then it looks like we are oh, almost done. I got to do the uh, lines on the shiplap. You can leave it in a very subtle state, just like it is here. But I like to go ahead and come back in with our mama brush. Again, this is a half inch flat. And then I'm going to mix up a dark charcoal gray. So a little bit of white here with that black. Let's push those two together, make this really dark. Okay, so nice thin, well, there it is, nice thin line. Definitely need that, that's important. And then we're gonna go ahead and take this all the way across. And you can also, you know, feather it out a little bit with Come back in with a little bit of white. I'm going to grab another mama. So a little bit more of that white, a really light heather gray, and do a little bit of transition, softening, blending right up next to the edge. So it's definitely supposed to be, you know, just a very kind of rough, imperfect line. So I'm going to come in again for this one. little sketch of a line happening there and there. And then let's finish that out here and here, too. So coming down there. All right. And then just for fun, let's do a few little, like, nail holes in here, too. So I'm going to take a bigger brush now. And then there it is. It's quite a bit bigger on the end. So let's go ahead and mix up a little bit of this black and white, but we want a lot of this darker charcoal look, but I need enough to dip into. All right, so we're, I think we're pretty good there. Now I'm going to take that bigger brush. Let's just dip right into that darker charcoal. And then let's do just a few little dots here. Again, I didn't quite get it on the first one. I needed one more compression on that one. So you just press down again. And it makes it right about the same size. But these are a fun little touch too that you can do. So again, very optional here. it's not your thing then you can just leave it very you know simply as just the white lines happening so 
just sprinkle these around in a few places. more here and then we'll be done. All right, it's looking good. And then you can just sign your masterpiece. But yes, I think we're finished with this. Yay. All right, so thank you so much everybody for joining me today. It's been so much fun painting with y'all. Uh, so again, this uh, painting kit is available on our website at tipsyartist.com. So we provide everything that you need, all the tools, canvas, paint, just basically everything, complete setup. All you need to do is add water and wine and that's it. <laughs> so again, we make it very easy. So um, yeah, have a wonderful day. Stay warm and we'll see you soon. Toodles. <laughs>